Hi, I'm Matt from Focus Training. I want to talk briefly about the importance of building an inclusive learning environment and how to do it. If you're a trainer or someone working in talent development, you're probably hearing a lot about this idea lately, and it really matters. But it's just as important if you're a leader of people in your organization, whether you have talent development in your title or not. Because as a manager of others, you also have a responsibility to help people grow and develop their skills and abilities. And it works better when we can do it in an inclusive learning environment. For a moment, just try to remember a time when maybe you showed up at an event or went to a workshop and you walked into the room and suddenly felt like you didn't belong. I think a lot of us have had this experience. Maybe you walked into a room and everyone in the room was older and seemed more experienced than you. Uh, maybe you walked into a room and everybody looked different than you. These moments can make us feel very uncomfortable and that discomfort, even those small moments of dissonance where we might not feel like we're in the wrong room, but it doesn't feel like the trainer or the leader is really talking to us. They seem to be talking to certain people, but not including us in the conversation can create a feeling of distance and disengagement. Learners need to feel safe, comfortable and engaged and an inclusive learning environment helps make sure that that's true for everyone all the time. So if we want to be effective, what can we do? Well, we want to check for some of the common biases that get into our learning environments that can make them feel distancing and less inclusive. I'll give you a quick example from my own experience. We developed a new activity a few years back, just a simple classroom activity that I was really excited about, a new way to engage the audience uh, as we were having a group discussion. We handed out blank index cards to everybody in the room, one of which was red and one of which was green. So every participant had a red and a green index card and they could raise and lower those to react to things that we were saying in the group, either to their peers or to me as the trainer, to express their opinion. And I thought the activity went great until after the program, a gentleman approached me and shared some feedback, which I was really grateful for. He said, hey, uh, interesting activity. The big challenge for me was I can't see this. And I said, Wait, what do you what do you mean? And he said, well, I'm red, green, colorblind. These two cards look identical to me. I can't tell the difference. And so it would have been really helpful if one of them said red on it or said green on it or even said agree or disagree, something like that. It just felt like I couldn't participate and it was kind of a bummer. Now, how lucky for me that I had a participant willing to share feedback in that way. Think about how many participants might have felt like that for different activities at different times and not said a thing. The point here is that we make a real impact by doing this better or a negative impact by not doing it the right way in the first place. There are lots of examples of how this can creep into the work that we do, whether it's in a formal classroom environment or in a coaching conversation with an employee. One other quick example I'll share with you to consider for yourself our stories and examples. Think about how often as trainers or as managers trying to coach someone, we reach for a story from our own experience and share it. We might think that story is incredibly relevant because it resonates for us. It's from our real world. But is that true for the person who's listening or everyone in the room? I'm the father of two young boys, so I often find myself tempted to tell stories about being a dad or tell stories about interacting with my boys. But what about the people in the room that don't have kids? Is that a relevant story for them? Maybe, but not in the same way. It's not gonna have the same impact. If you've got role plays that you use in a learning environment, are those scenarios written in a way that has potential bias creeping into it? Did a session a while back uh, in collaboration with a colleague who had pre-written role plays from a past trainer that had built them, and every single role play had the manager in the role play described as he or him. Worth considering that maybe a, a quick refresh of that would help more people in the room feel connected to what's going on. Another 
uh, sort of pitfall to watch out for is expressing your opinion as best practice. I catch myself doing this from time to time. I look at my own experience and I think about things that I prefer and it's tempting to describe those as the right way to do things. This is how you talk to customers because that's the way I always used to talk to customers or that's how I was taught. But is that necessarily best practice? Is an assumption based on fact and evidence or is an assumption based on our personal experience and worldview? I want to challenge these things. There are a lot of tools out there that you can use and in some of the programs that we offer you can join us to dive deeper into these ideas. But check out tools like the Ladder of Inference, which is a mental model to help you think about how your assumptions build up over time into beliefs and how those beliefs then circle back and affect your behaviors. Most importantly, slow down enough before you engage in learning and development practice of any kind, formal in the classroom or informal with teams that you lead, and challenge some of the assumptions that you might be making. Ask yourself, is this story something that everybody will get, or is it just fitting my worldview? Look at some of the tools that you're using, and most importantly, socialize them with other people who do the work that you do. Ask another leader, how would you teach this? How would you start this coaching conversation? How would you help somebody else understand this? And not just other leaders, but the learners that you engage with. Listen hard to the feedback that they share and watch for opportunities to make everyone feel more comfortable, safe, and engaged in the learning environment. An inclusive learning environment is a key skill for any leader who wants to help people grow and develop. If we can be helpful to you in taking the next step to do that, we would love to. Reach out to us anytime as a resource, and good luck.